Hello and welcome. This boat is two things. Number one, it's a 51 foot Formosa. Number two, she's all mine. I have been waiting so long to show you this. And I have been waiting because I needed some things to come to fruition and they all have. So here we are in this beautiful 51 foot pirate ship. Let's take a look. This, my friends, is the galley. And I could do a little bit of ballroom dancing in here if I wanted to. It's huge. The beam on this thing is 14 feet. And if you think about the size of Little Miss in length is 29. In the actual livable space, the livable space fits this way in this boat, which is fantastic. And there is so much galley here, I don't even know what to do with myself. I mean, storage for days. We could fit enough food on this boat to feed 17 animals and 18 crew. No problem. I mean, everywhere you turn, you can open things. Coming down into the companionway, every step is storage, which I'm starting to fill. <laughs> we have an amazing amount of refrigeration on this boat. We have a deep freeze or refrigerator area here, and this isotherm, which I have also on Loomis. Freya likes that. And as you can see, it's cold on the front because she's laying against it. It's not very efficient, but it's great for drinks. The other thing that I was noticing is that it's the exact size of a washing machine. So this thing might change. Here we have a three burner princess stove and we are baking up a storm. In fact, I'm thinking about baking something tonight. Here we have this beautiful stone countertop and a double sink. This right here is really nice, but I think I'm going to replace it with something off an old pirate ship. Maybe Hans Christian that has seen better days. Here is where the kids look through and ask me if dinner's ready. And then I spray them down. <laughs> it's been really fun. Any place that the water hits the varnish or the sun hits the varnish, it peels. So we're going to redo all of this varnish in here and probably do some fancy curtains, button up a couple leaks, and Bob's your uncle. One of my favorite parts of the pilot house is this helm. This is a great place to get out of the weather. Now, if you guys watched the season of me sailing in the med, I froze my tail off. It was February. If we were in this boat in the med in February, I would have been down here the whole time and absolutely fine. There is all of this space back here for navigational instruments and paper charts, which I'm super excited to use. And, um... Yeah, you can kind of run the whole boat from here. Beneath the helm is going to be all of the electrical panel switches, the bilge, and I'm going to show you some more wine storage. Sneaky, sneaky wine storage. Currently, this is access to all the wiring, but I'm going to make a double floor. And what's going to happen is there's going to be a little holder for maybe six bottles of wine that I'm not going to tell anyone. And while I'm down here, I'm going to show you the parquet floor. This is not something that I usually like in boats. It seems like it's been cheaply done a lot. But this boat has used real hardwoods everywhere. And these are individual planks. This is not a veneer. Uh, it's, you can sand it back. You can re-varnish it. There's a lot of wood to work with. And everything's in great condition. When you see these boats, these 51 Formosas or some of the Leaky Tiki's, they are usually in terrible shape. A lot of the material has been sanded back. They've been left for years. There's been a lot of water damage. This boat's in excellent condition. She just needs a little bit of lipstick. Moving on to the ugliest upholstery, circa 1992, is the settee. Now, I have already ordered the fabric swatches and all sorts of reds and pinks and blues to make this super fabulous, Sailing with Lone Star style. But for now, we have this. But what's cool about this is actually what's behind it. And what's behind it is an intense amount of storage. This is a very shallow area here. And on many other boats, this would have just been left without cupboard doors because that's easier and there's not a lot of depth. But they have made storage every place that you possibly would want it. And these cabinets go all the way around the entire back of the settee. Underneath me here, which I will not get into right now, is an air conditioning unit and a place for more batteries and food storage. In the future, I'd like to put a deep freezer here somewhere so we can go off-grid for a long time, and also a big generator. On these Formosas, there isn't a great place to put a lot of solar power, in my opinion, so we're looking at a solution for the top of the Bimini top. But we will see where that takes us when the time comes. Let's go down to the salon. 
Alright guys, you know what? There are a lot of bulkheads in this boat, which means there's a lot of space in this boat. You are standing in the middle of the second bulkhead, which has a gorgeous sliding door, which I'm going to show you in a moment. And this is a salon. This is where I'm going to put about 17 of my friends as we cross the Pacific. We're going to do hammocks. We're going to do hamsters. We're going to do brothers. We're going to do girlfriends. It's going to be fantastic. And we have enough room for all of their crap. Check this out. Here, Blake has found a good place for his cap gun. And here are our instruction manuals and the mail that I've not gone through because I'm so organized. Atlas of the Ocean by National Geographic. Do you think that that is like correct? Can we navigate off of the Nat Geo Atlas? All right, so this starboard side mirrors the port side. However, on the port side, we have two extra things. We have a heater, a diesel heater. And if I'm really honest, it kind of scares me to put a fire inside of my boat, but we're gonna try it. It's Washington people. All right, so here we have the Newport diesel heater. Dickinson, I don't know much about this. I do know that you're supposed to throw toilet paper on it that is lit on fire and then fuel it with diesel from the engine. I mean, when I say it out loud, it sounds like a terrible idea but it does warm the boat up. So we're gonna do a little YouTube university on that and then I will regurgitate that information to you so you can learn how to use your own Newport Dickinson stove fire inside the boat. Maybe we can barbecue in this. Above you, where I'm looking now, is a gorgeous butterfly hatch, but you're gonna have to wait for that. We're going outside. First, let's move to one of the other bulkheads. On the port side, we have another commode and a shower. Now the shower needs some love because there's a lot of water going on that varnish and you guys all know what happens when water hits varnish. But here is the main toilet and this is where all of the people that are not me are going to be using it. I don't poop in here. I poop in there if you wanted to know. Sexy. Here's the shower and this is where everyone showers. There are two heads and one shower on this boat. Two toilets one shower. But below me, where my feet are, is an access, which should be a sump. It's not. It just goes straight to the bilge. And this bilge is deep and long and spacious. So we can hold all types of shower water and animal poop. This, to starboard, is going to be another bunk room with a ton of storage underneath. There are so many drawers. I'm going to put all sorts of things, maybe a possum, maybe a raccoon, maybe a couple parrots, maybe a few more children. And here we have this very angry tiger calling you come hither. Forward. We're going to the V-berth. We're going to the forecastle if you're a tall ship person. And here we go, another bulkhead. We have so many bulkheads. This is Bianca's lair and it is unfinished. And um, what I think happened here was an M80. No, I'm just kidding. I think they couldn't get to this um, this through hole right here, so they cut it out. But this is a double bunk area and another hatch out. So we'll put the ladder back into the forecastle. We'll put this back together. We have a couple of design ideas, which we'll go over with you guys in the next videos to come. Um, really, there's so many things you could do in here, but I think it's really nice for what I see coming for the channel is just having a lot of people out and a lot of fun and a lot of energy and a lot of pets and a lot of adventure. And so I need all the bunks I can get. This is Bianca's bunk, which is a super cool fort. There's going to be a ladder that leads up to the deck, which is going to be super cool and also a problem when she's a teenager. Parents out there, you know what I'm talking about. Um, there's also a little place which is a lifesaver for me. There's a mirror and a sink in here so she can get all of her pretty on without using up the head space when everyone has to pee in the morning for hours and hours. This is a really cool setup. I cannot wait to put it back together. We're heading back to my favorite part of the boat, the captain's quarters. Welcome to my lair. This is my new room. Come on in. So here we have a full queen size bed that fits normal sheets, people. And if you are very short from the torso up, you're in good shape. Otherwise, you kind of have to crouch a little bit. 
But the good news is, is that I have so much storage. Look, I've sort of moved in. Here are my packing cubes. And for those of you that have been following me for a long time, you know I'm obsessed with these. They're like drawers. But I mean, it's crazy. Like all of this storage in this one cabinet is like the entire storage on the V-Birth of Little Miss. Super stoked. And I'm really excited to get my varnish on. So I could open every single cupboard for you if you want. Cue angel music. Ah. Okay. Nope, oh, this one's yelling at me. So what's really cool is that the previous owners decided to take out the old Formosa um, main captain's quarters or owner's quarters, which had like a really funky bed before. Um, they kind of staggered them. If you guys get onto um, Yacht World, you'll see like the aft cabin's always like a little bit funky. So they did this really cool upgrade. Unfortunately, it's not finished, but actually fortunately it's not finished because I want to do like a little reading nook slash daily show making station right here. It's going to be amazing. So maybe like a little seat and I have my little laptop and I can type away and I can answer comments and I can make daily shows and I can never leave my room because I'll tell you what, the square footage in this master cabin is the same size as Little Miss. And right behind you guys is my very own head. I bet you with this glorious Jabsco electric toilet, I could flush the lead all the way down and nothing would happen. That's a lie. <laughs> There's so much storage for makeup in here, you guys. I am um, so excited. I've already filled it to the brim with uh, um, as much face spackle as possible. Um, I could fit another child in here if I was in the market for that sort of thing. And um, there's access to everything. You can get in places and not have to be a tiny person. So this is super exciting and cool. No one's allowed in here. This is my fortress of solitude. Now get out. If I didn't feel like a pirate before, I feel like a pirate now. This is quite the helm. It is all hardwood and so much varnish. Um, underneath here is um, some equipment that is unplugged and um, it has hydraulic steering which is really neat. I haven't used that before but you really can't feel the rudder move back and forth. Behind me here has been remodeled. This uh, used to be cut out into a horseshoe uh, and the previous previous owner lifted this up and made it straight and I would imagine he did that so you could sleep out here on watch. I think this would be really nice with a bunch of pillows. This may seem like a simple thing but this is all of the framework for the bimini top and I don't know why but this always busts my brain. I never want to design this framework. It's so nice that it's already here. There is no canvas and there's something else she's missing. She's missing her rigging. We have the sticks and they are in mass furling sticks. We have a deck step mizzen and we have a keel stepped main, both of which have in mass furling, which I'm not too crazy about, but we're gonna give it a try because that's what she has. And she has zero rigging. So I don't know if you guys remember Mike Sapala that I worked with years ago on Little Miss. I spoke to him a couple days ago and he might be willing to come out. So that'll be some fun videos in the future. And uh, we'll learn a lot from him. I've never uh, rigged a catch before, but it's double the fun. So let's head forward. I'm gonna show you my favorite part of the boat, which is the bass bread. As we're heading forward, I wanted to point these things out. These are also teak and really beautiful. This goes into the master stateroom, which we were discussing putting a ladder to. It would be kind of neat to be able to sneak out and have coffee on the deck without waking the kids. And moving forward, we have the traveler, which needs a little bit of love, and two more hatches that lead into the pilot house. And this, which I think of as the boat's eyebrows. I'm not really sure what you call this. This is like an overhang on the pilot house. And underneath there's a little bit of repair to do, uh, but I think it's gonna be pretty simple and straightforward. These windows that go into the pilot house, I don't know if you call them port lights or windows or what the term is for them, but they're glass and they're original. And I'm not sure, I would imagine they're tempered but I think just for my own um, peace of mind, I'd like to replace these with something that is for sure tempered or maybe a different product that isn't glass. And here, my darlings, is the butterfly hatch. This makes my
my heart sing and I kind of feel like this is what I might make girly on this boat. Maybe I could put some stained glass in here and bring some pink into this lady. One of the things that I love about this are all of the bronze fixtures. Even the turnbuckles are bronze. All of the fixtures, the dogs for the port lights, everything's bronze and it is so beautiful. It really has a very neat patina on it. It adds a little green. I kind of go back and forth on whether or not to polish it out. I'm sure you're going to yell at me in the comments and say, don't do it. But um, I'm a girl, so I like shiny stuff. Here is the keel-stepped mast. This is a really cool thing. I don't think it's necessary on this boat, especially with all of the lines running inside of the, the in-mast furling, but this does add a lot of nostalgia. She needs some love, a little bit of varnish, all right, a lot of varnish, but I think it's really cool. I'm probably gonna do some granny bars right here on the deck because a lot of the winches are gonna be for the main halyards on the actual mast. It's really difficult to run the rigging all the way back to the cockpit on this particular boat. I didn't realize that, but after speaking to the rigger, he said that it might pose a challenge. But because there's so much deck space here, we've got 14 feet of beam. I feel pretty safe coming up here. Now on Little Miss, I just had a tiny little place to walk, and so I ran everything aft, which made me feel a lot safer staying in the cockpit. Moving forward here is the forecastle. And there is a ladder in storage, which I will take you to on another day. Oh, she needs to be greased up. But this goes to Bianca's room. And this is going to be a little bit of a challenge because I feel like it's a teenager escape hatch. But we'll, we'll worry about that a little later. I think if we just go to a deserted island, I won't have any problems because there'll be no boys. This is a brand new Maxwell windlass. It's not wired in and it has never been used. I don't know how many feet of chain. We have not really inventoried the boat yet, which is gonna make another really cool video in the future. The Samson posts have been reinforced. This is often a place where boats like this leak, and she has been gussied up. I would like for you to observe the bowsprit. This is my favorite place of the whole boat, and if I'm not at the helm, I will be out here, no doubt. I don't know if you guys noticed this, but all of the teak decking has been removed and new non-skid has been laid down. And that is one job on a leaky tiki that I do not want to do. What that entails is removing thousands and thousands of screws and replacing those little holes with epoxy filler. And then you have to paint the deck and then you have to add the non-skid. And they did such a beautiful job on this boat. It really makes it a lot less maintenance to own one of these. So these solar vents are pretty cool. But what's even cooler is that in the storage unit, there are the original bronze door ads and I want to polish those up and do the interiors red and replace them. I know that these are really efficient and really cool but it takes away from the nostalgia of the boat a little bit in my opinion. So some of the projects that we're going to be working on over the next few weeks is the exterior varnish. We'll start with these and then we'll work towards some of these scratches and try to do some patchwork. I'm going to do my best to learn some of the best techniques for that and you guys are going to come along with me. <coughs>
Are you guys still here? I'm having my glass of wine and the day is over. You need to go home. But before you leave, like and subscribe.